Ready for eight o'clock to just spin around as quick as I can? Ah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's exciting, obviously, other than last weekend in Vegas, to open up, uh, you know, the competition out here, um, Thursday night footy. It's good. It's good to play first, too. I think the boys have waited long enough, so, yeah, looking forward to it. Do you feel confident after what you've previously said is uh, has been a good off season that going into this game you're feeling you're feeling good? Yeah, I thought uh, after Fiji, you know, we weren't happy with our performance at Fiji, but the response in the training has been very pleasing. So, um, you know, I feel like we it's probably a good thing um, that we got a bit of a kick in the backside after Fiji, and um, the boys have responded really well. Do you think that'll help set the standards early? I know that's probably something you've been talking about in camp, back to what we saw last year, and then that big run back in the year. Yeah, I hope so. We're, we're certainly motivated to continue on what we managed to do last year, so uh, the first part of that is um, certainly starting well. Yep. The team you've named, obviously there's plenty of people out there who like to name the team um, and think they know what they're doing, but looking at your halves pairing, was that that you couldn't go back on? They, you know played well last year, they did the job, even though Jack Coggers come in, did you just have, did you feel like you just needed to stick with the pair that had done well? Uh, yeah, that's probably um, a few answers to that. Um, I think a lot of the commentary was around, you know, Jack Cogger starting when Braley was available. So Braley hasn't been available for three weeks now. So as soon as that changed, you need coverage for your nine and Jack's the perfect person for that. He's played that role for Penrith off the bench. I'm really comfortable with the team for this week. We've got halves covered. We've got, you know, it's a big ask for Phoenix round one to go 80. You need coverage for hookers. So Jack's a perfect man for that. Um, any time that I can, look, loyalty is a really strong value of mine. And any time that you can show it, well, I try to do so. You can't always, you know, there's decisions that are taken out of your hands, but ultimately, you know, Cog's done a really good job for Penrith in that grand final. I won't take that away. That's it's very, very good, astute signing for the club. But those other two boys had a hell of a season for us last year, so they've earned the right. You mentioned Jaden Braley there before. How is he going? When would you expect to see him back in the side? Yeah, he looked very close. Uh, look, if it's not round two, it's it'd be a definite round three. So he looks really good every time I see him. You know, he trained this morning, um, very close. But just given his history, it's it's a long season. I don't want to rush it. Um, obviously, a lot of talk. Who would come in and replace Dom Young? You've got Anari Tuala there on the wing. You feel yeah. confident in his abilities? Yeah, I am. He's uh, ultra consistent from everything from you know what he does with the GPS, how hard he works, probably goes unnoticed. Um, yeah, he's really reliable defensively. Uh, works really hard for the back three, looking after Kalen, making sure that he's getting back there to carry the footy. So, uh, but in saying that, I think Tom Jenkins has done a really good job over the summer as well. But look for the round one team. I think now he's uh, probably got some consistency on his side over the summer that got him the the go ahead. Have you talked about that finals game here with Canberra at all? Because Canberra's going to be want, want to come out and get the points over you. They'll be disappointed from that result. Have you talked about that they will be fired, fired up for um, this game? Not really. We understand the type of footy team and the game style that Canberra will bring. They obviously had you know, a fair bit of success with it last year in that game. It was a pretty hard-fought game. Um, but we don't rely on... Our motivation can't come from how motivated the opposition are. Ours is we want to we want to continue on what we've done over there, and it starts in round one. We don't we want to get off to a really good start. That's more motivating than than how hungry the opposition are. Looking at the team this time last year, how different is it, and how different is that feeling around the club? Uh, I think I've said numerous times our summer is probably. The, the pleasing thing with our summer and how good a shape the team came back in um, came from a positive place rather than a poor season to get our motivation to be better. This time it's uh, it was a good season and we're chasing that feeling again and we want more. So that's probably been the best part. What can the fans expect to see from, from the Knights on Thursday night? Well, you see an enthusiastic footy team that wants to go out there and uh, compete really hard for their fans. We want to fill that stadium. I, um, I think from all reports there's a pretty healthy crowd there and um, we want to keep filling it and the only way we do that is to perform well. Talk to me about some of those lessons learned from Fiji. 
Uh, look, I don't, I don't want 80 minutes to mask what three months has done. Uh, you know, they've been very, very good. Uh, just, it was a performance that we probably looked like, well, let's just get this one out of the way and get home and get ready for round one. Um, and it's hard to be too critical of that. The pleasing part were, was that we owned some of our uh, shortcomings there and we trained accordingly, we fixed them. So, you know, Fiji's a trial. We've seen plenty of teams not perform in trials and then doesn't affect round one. Adam, how happy are you with the club's depth this year? New South Wales Cup side was pretty strong. Yep. Like a couple of regulars unavailable. It, yeah, really happy with, number one, the health of the squad. We've only got really Brails as the only one. So, uh, look, the, the staff have done a hell of a job there. Really happy with that. I think we've got good depth in key positions. Obviously, the spine with Will Price and Jack Cogger and, you know, Phoenix and Hastings and Gamble, that's, that's really pleasing. Um, yeah, and I think we have some healthy competition in and around the back row and the, and the middle. So, yeah, to answer your question, I'm really happy with it. Um, I think, uh, you know, we have a saying, you steal, steal on steel. You know, so that's what we've got at training because of that depth. Um, and that, that'll that play a big part on how far we go in the season is how well you're training each week. And um, judging by our two training runs this week, they've been very, very competitive sessions against two quality outfits out there. How was the half battle player in particular over the summer? Uh, is that Jack's presence lifted um, Jackson and, and Tyson? Yep, yep, to... Um, you know, Robert probably gets sick of hearing this quote, but the rising tide lifts all the boats. And uh, Jack Cogger brought, you know, he, he lifted the tide and Tyson and Jackson lifted with it. So, yeah, they've been good. As I said, you, you're putting quality guys out there that need to perform every day. That's what we got over the summer. Tyson Frizzell said he might switch to the left side of the field. Is that going to happen? Uh, we looked at that originally. Um, I thought, you know, losing fits uh, was one thing. Uh, we signed Kai um, and brought him out here, but then to disrupt, look, Dom leaving on the right edge, to disrupt Tyson as well, we, we started to have too many disruptions then. So, you know, I've talked to Kai and he doesn't have a preference. He probably hasn't played rugby league long enough to have a side. Um, so we've looked at Kai on the left side and he's, um, look, he doesn't get any shorter because I put him on the left side. So we've, uh, we've left him over there and left Tyson where he belongs. Adam, you're the season with really high expectations. How important is to sort of um, come up with a winning round one to justify those expectations? Yeah, really important. Um, the, with expectation comes pressure, and that's an honour. That means that, you know, we don't run away from that. You know, the as I alluded to before, there's guys that understand that we've come off a successful season, and... The reason why there are so many people filling that stadium is because they, they want to be there to watch us win. And, um, yeah, they understand that. To answer your question on round one, yeah, I think it's important to get off to a really good start. We've got a, it's no secret, we've got a pretty tough month in terms of travel and opposition. So uh, getting off to a really good start is, uh, is always important. And obviously you're going to get a big crowd there and you had three sellouts at the end of last season. You know, you, you've really got a massive home ground advantage in terms of crowd support and that. Yep. Back in the glory days, you know, Newcastle was always a place that other teams probably feared coming. Is mm. that so, sort of where you'd like to get back to? Absolutely. Yep. I think that's, you know, something that uh, we need to create. It's round one. So, you know, I don't think teams fear coming here now. I think most teams enjoy coming here because it's a very... It's a, it's a footy mad town and it's a very educated football crowd as well so uh, look ultimately we'd love to get that to be a real um, you know a, a, a road trip that the teams dread but we've got to create that. Obviously um, high expectations around you guys probably Canberra in a different position where people are maybe doubting them but um, Ricky Stewart has a real knack of mm. um, producing in those circumstances so are you a bit wary about them you know, coming here and springing an ambush? Absolutely. It, it, it can't be an ambush when you're playing Canberra because, you you know, you know what's going to turn up and they, they haven't disappointed in every game that we've played and it's always very physical um, and Ricky does that. I think they, in particular, the start of their seasons and then the end of their seasons, they're, they're, they're really good at that. So we understand what's coming and we've prepared accordingly.
you, your record against Canberra is pretty good, but does that sort of give you a bit of confidence or is that irrelevant? Irrelevant to me. I think that's for the the past team that was involved in that record. You know, that's for them to, to look at. The current squad, um, we're O and O with them at the moment with the current list, so that's all I worry about. And how hard was this round one besides Pip? Is there anyone that you were particularly impressed with? Over the summer in the trials that you had to sort of leave out. Uh, yeah, look, I, I think a guy like Jed Cartwright, obviously, I thought he was he was really good for us um, against Cronulla in particular. Um, so he, I mean, he's he's named in the 18, 19th man. Um, him and Tom Jenkins were two that were that were quite hard to leave out, and even young Will Price. I thought, you know, he's he's got a big future out here, and we don't have to rush him too quick. But I thought he was nice and energetic for us. And look, it's you'd love to pick them all, but you can't. So as I said, we've had a we've got a healthy squad, so everyone's available for selection other than Brails and. And they've all had good summers, so yeah, it was quite difficult. Does that mean, sorry, does that mean those three players you mentioned there, Tom, Jed, and uh, Will, drop back to New South Wales Cup? Is that likely you'll run one to seven? Yeah, I probably don't need to announce that till an hour before kickoff, but yeah, we may as well do it now. That if all things going well, uh, yeah, we should be one to seven. Eight.